Coming up on today's Locked On Big Ten, Asher Lowe from Locked On Badgers is in to break down everything going on in Big Ten hoops with us again here today as the football season winds down. What's going on with Wisconsin? They've got a matchup with Indiana coming up later on tonight. That's all right here today on Locked On Big Ten. <laughs> You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening into Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the conference every single day of the week. Monday through Friday, we're here to fill you in on anything you may have missed across the Big Ten. We've got Asher Lowe in on a Wednesday, as always, to chat about what's going on with Wisconsin and everything else in the conference, of course. Let, let's start with those Badgers, though, and thanks for being on, as always, with us, Asher. Wisconsin got a game on the hardwood tonight against Indiana. Let's start with that task at hand. We, we've talked about Wisconsin last week. We had Jacob Root on yesterday to talk Hoosiers, so don't want to get too much into this with the two teams, but this matchup's very intriguing. Two teams that have been playing well to start off the season facing off i mean maybe the only better one that's coming up in this week of big 10 games you'd argue wisconsin's playing later on this week yeah i think that we expected the badgers to be on a different tier than indiana heading into this year and that has not turned out to be the case i think both these teams now at least the national consensus is that they'll fight for those say three to five range spots in the big 10 come big 10 play when we get into the meat of things in a few weeks but i think indiana is actually pretty well suited to beat Wisconsin and to take advantage of what Wisconsin is not great at, even at this point in the season. I think Trace Jackson Davis is the perfect nightmare to create the perfect storm of bad for Wisconsin in terms of defense and the personnel they have to guard different guys. I think TJD is probably the toughest matchup for them in the whole conference. And there are a lot of teams you could say that about in terms of TJD is going to be a tough matchup on a lot of people once we get into big 10 play for real. But I think that Steven Crowell, right? Like that, that's what he struggles with. He's not the world's best mover. He's not awesome. When you bring him out of the paint defensively, I'm talking about, he's not the best in the pick and roll. And I just don't know where Wisconsin goes exactly after him. Do they go to Ben Carlson? Maybe who hasn't played great, honestly, in his sophomore year. And he's coming off an injury last year. It's going to take him some time to find his legs for sure. Doesn't have a lot of experience at this level. Are they going to go to Johnny Davis? Maybe at times on trace Jackson Davis, give him a different look. I don't know. I don't know how Wisconsin is going to defend him. Are they going to send the double a bunch and just say, hey, if Miller Cop uh, hits a three, if Johnson hits threes, we lose. That, that's game. I'm fine with that. Are they going to do that? Are they going to let Race Thompson beat them with the passing? I'm worried about this Indiana offense from a Wisconsin defense perspective. But, hey, the Badgers have shown they can win games with offense. They did it against Marquette. They can do it again against Indiana. They've won games in a variety of ways, and I think you could see them win this game at the offensive end behind Johnny Davis, behind Brad Davison, and behind Chucky Hepburn. Rick Jackson Davis, a, a nightmare situation for a whole lot of teams when, whenever he steps out onto the court. But yes. we'll see what ends up happening in that game later on tonight. Uh, before we get into the rest of the Big Ten, real quick switch over to the football field. Wisconsin ends up in the Las Vegas Bowl. It's facing off against Arizona State. It's a Power 5 matchup. It, it's a late bowl season game, obviously, that was expected, but how are you feeling about where the Badgers end up on the bowl game kind of uh, spectrum or scale, whatever it is? Vegas has been very kind to Wisconsin recently, and we saw that with the Maui Invitational. We saw Wisconsin win three games in three days there, so hopefully the football team can carry over some of that same mojo. Obviously, you have the rematch of one of the worst losses in program history, Wisconsin and uh a game. I, do I even want to bring this up right now? You, you've seen the video, I'm sure. You maybe watched the game live. It was the world's worst spike attempt to stop the clock. The clock didn't stop, and Wisconsin lost the game. Probably the most ridiculous ending I've ever seen in college football, to be honest. If you haven't watched it, go look up Wisconsin and Arizona State from, I want to say, 2013 off the top of my head it was, uh, maybe 2012. But most ridiculous loss in program history, and they have a chance to avenge that against Arizona State on December 30th. The Sun Devils, a weird team, and a team I know pretty well because I do watch a lot of Pac-12 sports. I'm a big Pac-12 fan, a big West Coast guy, and Jaden Daniels is a problem. He's been a problem for a lot of Pac-12 teams. Uh, he's got a ton of experience. He's had turnover issues at times this year, and they were a team that, led by Jaden Daniels at quarterback and led by a solid run game, 
had a really good thing going and all of a sudden had an inside track possibly to the only Pac-12 chance at a college football playoff berth. This was way back, say, October 8th. This team is rolling. They're 5-1. and one. Basically, everything's in front of them. Their only loss was to BYU on the road, which is a loss. You can get into the college football playoff with that kind of loss. They had everything in front of them. They could have taken care of business. And all of a sudden, after three years of saying this will be the year for Herm Edwards and Arizona State, everything came crashing down in front of them very quickly. It happened in the blink of an eye, losses to Utah, Washington State, and then a loss to Oregon State a couple of weeks later. So everything came crashing down for a team that had really high expectations. This is going to be a tough matchup for Wisconsin, but I think the Badgers feel good about their chances. Jim Leonard versus Jaden Daniels is how I'd build this thing. How do you feel about the way that, at least in, just in the Big Ten, those New Year's Day Bowls stacked up? Obviously, you knew that Ohio State was probably headed to that Rose Bowl. Uh, Michigan makes the college football playoff, of course. But then Michigan State comes in with the New Year's Six Bowl. That was expected. Then Iowa and Penn State snag the other two New Year's Day Bowls over the Wisconsin's, uh, Minnesota's, Purdue's out there. It was interesting the way that these big bowl games decided to go about selecting their teams. But when you're just thinking about program, I mean, Iowa and Penn State, you can't go wrong with Iowa. It was just in that Big Ten title game, too. So it makes sense on the field there, too. I, I'm just interested to hear your thoughts on it because I thought it kind of ended up going a little bit differently, at least than what I thought was going to happen with those way those games stacked up. Well, Wisconsin had everything in front of them. If they wanted a New Year's Six Bowl, it was right in front of them. They yeah. had to win a game. They had to beat Minnesota, and they didn't. So I really have nothing to say about that. They got what they deserved. They lost that football game, and they play in the Las Vegas Bowl. As far as the matchups in the New Year's Six Bowls, I love that Ohio State. And I've already seen I've already seen Ohio State people saying, man, I, I saw a couple times on Twitter saying, man, we're playing Utah. Like, we're not playing a classic Pac-12 power. We're playing Utah. Like, really, that's our bowl matchup. After we lost to Michigan, we've fallen that far. We're playing Utah. Nate, there aren't four better teams in the country right now than Utah. Utah right now is better than Cincinnati. Utah right now might be better than Michigan. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, they are playing better football than almost anybody in the country right now. They have been on a tear. They look like a totally different team than they did early in this year. And you can say, oh, Pac-12, Pac-12. They have blown teams out the last four weeks, just destroyed teams the last few weeks. They, they took Oregon to school twice. They beat Oregon by 28 and by 31. That's an Oregon team that went to Ohio State and beat them. They beat them by 28 and by 31 in two out of the last three weeks. They are freaking ridiculous, and it's because of Cam Rising the way he's been playing, but it's also because they have these ridiculous tight ends uh, that are just automatic. Dalton Kincaid has been awesome all year long. Britton Covey uh, in the slot has been great for this team. They are a dangerous, dangerous passing attack. Cam Rising is going to give Ohio State fits, and I think Utah wins the football game. Now, that's my favorite matchup I'm looking forward to because I think Ohio State fans are going to be very surprised at what they find in Pasadena. It'll be that game, Iowa, Kentucky, and then Penn State, Arkansas. Three of the first football games of 2022 in January 1. And then also Michigan State, Pittsburgh's a New Year's Six Bowl, but that actually takes place on December 30th. But anyway, we'll get more to what's going on around the Big Ten in basically everything happening in the conference with Asher in just a minute. You're listening into Locked On Big Ten. Today's episode of Locked On Big Ten is brought to you by Prize Picks. Now, We've talked about prize picks plenty on the show already, but if you don't know by now, this is the place for you to play daily fantasy sports with some of your favorite college players. As the basketball season starts to get going, there's all sorts of players that are honestly just at really small schools that a lot of these fantasy sites just don't take the time to go through. But prize picks has more college athletes for you to play daily fantasy with than any other site out there. So if your goal is to play these fantasy sports with college athletes that you watch every day, prize picks is the place for you to go. Head on over to prizepicks.com or download their app and at least see what I'm talking about. How it works is you go through players and pick different kinds of fantasy props on over amount of yards or, or under an amount of points scored, three pointers made, things like that. And if you end up getting all of your picks correct, you could end up doubling, tripling, or even more. 
the amount of money that you're putting in when you play. Again, head on over to prize picks to see exactly how all of it works, but I'm just telling you right now, this is a different way for you to play fantasy sports. It's more than just a new site. They do things differently in how things work. We'll tell you more about prize picks, of course, again soon, but right now let's head back to the show. Back in here on Locked On Big Ten, alongside Asher Lowe, our co-host every Wednesday and the host of Locked On Badgers, Monday through Friday. I'm Nate Dickinson, here with everything you need to know about the Big Ten every weekday. Thanks for making our show the first listen of your day. We're here with Asher to talk about all Big Ten teams as they came out for the football season just yesterday. And a whole lot of not surprises on this team. I, I don't know how to really go about a really long list of players, but unanimous picks, C.J. Stroud, Kenneth Walker the third of Michigan State, Iowa's Tyler Linderbaum at the center spot, and then Aiden Hutchinson, the only defensive unanimous selection on the defensive line for Michigan. And let me make sure I'm not missing any others down the way. No, I don't believe I am. So those are unanimous selections. Wisconsin, if you want to start with the Badgers, gets a couple of linebackers in that I sure has to feel really good for you just because linebacker is a pretty deep position in this conference this season. It helps that Aiden Hutchinson goes on the D line for this, but everything really, really nice there on the Wisconsin side and they got an offensive guard in as well I don't know where do you want to start with uh, this conversation is I have a few things I want to go to as to like this guy could have been replaced by that guy but obviously a whole lot of talent in the Big Ten it's not that much up for discussion as to if these guys deserve where they're getting well who who in the world which voter didn't vote for Leo Chanel as a first team all Big Ten or like what were you <laughs> watching all year how is he not unanimous what other linebacker would you put in there over Leo, who's been the best, the best linebacker of the conference? I don't think it's close this year. When you have three linebacker spots, who in the world is not putting Leo in their top three? I don't that, that baffled me. But mm -hmm. it's pretty cool to see Braylon Allen also on this second team, a guy that was literally supposed to be a safety coming to Wisconsin, maybe a linebacker, and instead he is all of a sudden a true freshman all Big Ten second team running back. That's pretty cool. A guy that wasn't really on the depth chart early in the year at running back. Not wasn't really. He wasn't on the depth chart early in the year at running back in a room that was supposed to be deep, in a room that all of a sudden lost guys due to injury, due to Jalen Berger's dismissal from the program. So pretty awesome to see him there. And, I mean, how good are these wide receivers if Jackson Smith and Jigba is a third teamer also? that's a And, listen, pretty tough to pick between Olave Wilson and – in Jigba mm -hmm. and where they should all be. You got Alave first, Wilson second, and Jigba third. That's a pretty tough choice. You could really go anywhere there. Like I could flip those orders and I wouldn't really have a problem with it, to be honest. I thought Jackson Smith and Jigba was the most impressive of the three. I don't know if he's like the best of the three, but I thought he was the most wow factor of those three this year. But you can go anywhere there. That's that's a pick your poison. There's no wrong answer type of situation. As far as the defense. Love to see Keanu Benton on there. Obviously, I think he had a fantastic year in Wisconsin's defensive line, had a really good year in general. Caesar Williams gets in there as a third teamer. It was nice to see Matt Henningsen, the smartest man in football, also a third teamer. And also, who didn't vote for George Karloftis as a unanimous yeah, pick? Yeah, right. There were a couple. Who was, who was not voting for Karloftis and Chanel as unanimous picks alongside Aiden Hutchinson, who obviously deserves his unanimous selection? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, that's probably the big questions that you already touched on what my, I mean, not really biggest, like who didn't do this, but kind of biggest, like up in the air things that wide receiver spot. Olave makes the first team, but then coming in with them, David Bell Purdue ends up taking that second first team, all big 10 spot. Again, it could have been any, any number of players. You go down the list, Jahan Dotson, and Garrett Wilson on the second team. It's just a packed, packed position in this conference. I mean, we talked about, before the season, Alave and Wilson just on the same team might be the two best wide receivers in all the country, not just what's going on in the Big Ten. But it ends up being Bell out of Purdue who takes that spot. I have to imagine it was a lot to do with that kind of down the stretch that Purdue had run where they were just passing all over the place. And he ends up with more than 1,200 yards, kind of steals one away in my opinion, because I don't think a lot of people were thinking of him throughout a lot of this season as – up there with the rest of those guys. Everyone knew his name, no doubt about that. But as far as being first team all Big Ten, I mean, he exploded in a way at the end there. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's a too many cooks in the kitchen situation yeah. when you have three guys taking numbers and you have, yes, an Ohio State offense that racks up the numbers and it's going to make everybody's numbers look pretty good when it's all said and done. But versus 
a David Bell, who's in a pass heavy offense, as you said, especially in the back half of the year. And he's really the guy now. He's the dude mm-hmm. with Rondell Moore not there anymore. He was the guy getting everything, all the targets, all the looks, all the attention from a defense too. So you got to take that into consideration as well. It's a little bit easier to put up, you know, on a 150 yard, 200 yard game as he's done in the past when Rondell Moore is lined up on the opposite side of you. And uh, he's taken a lot of the attention, a lot of the doubles, uh, a lot of the safety attention away from you. So I think David Bell probably just had better statistical numbers because listen, he played on his own essentially in that wide receiver room. And I also think that if you had put maybe two of the Ohio state guys, first team and one of them, not sort of disrespectful of that third one, I think they wanted to just split it up. I feel like maybe that's also a consideration as well. And Hey, I mean, I don't know. Wisconsin had a position sweep at linebacker, but yeah, you know, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, e- even if you are taking that Ohio State stuff, I would have pinned like a Jahan Dotson to get that spot there just midway through the season. Again, oh, yeah, Bell, er- Bell earned it. You can't take it away from what he did. If it, it was just Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed yeah. had huge, huge moments this year mm-hmm. for Michigan State. But I mean, obviously, their end of the year probably hurts him a little bit. Right, right. It, it was obviously a packed, packed list all the way up and down. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that ends up trying to stick out to me along the way but again it was just there's so much talent that you can't really uh, talk about down on it too much I think it really was just a factor of uh, really just spreading out votes I mean obviously these are people voting from the media from all across the Big Ten too so it's not that many like Ohio State voters to put the Ohio State guys in I, I, get, I don't think that people who vote for this kind of stuff think about that all that much I do think they just kind of put who they think is best and send it in partly because I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. It, It's a lot more effort to try and like rig these kind of things than it would be just to kind of do it honestly. But anyway, Asher, thanks for coming on as always here to locked on big 10. We appreciate you being here. I know you're going to be on tonight with everything going on with Wisconsin basketball against Indiana. Best of luck there. Best of luck later this weekend too what, what i forget even who the matchup is on saturday ohio state at right ohio, ohio state. state i remember yeah, it was okay. the only ranked matchup of the week but i couldn't remember who it was you were playing ohio state this weekend we already asked you about indiana uh, how you feeling about the buckeye team this weekend on saturday before we let you go yeah i think that's going to be a really tough matchup for wisconsin their second true road game of the year going to a place where ohio state just knocked off duke right a few short days ago it's a buckeye team that started the year a little bit slow we saw that game against Akron where they, they kind of lollygagged their way through it, lost to Xavier on the road. But listen, road environments in college basketball, always really, really tough. But then all of a sudden, they have some impressive wins. The Seton Hall win was impressive. The Duke win, obviously, at the end. Duke kind of just froze up in that second half. And Ohio State was able to take advantage of, I think, Duke's youth in that situation, especially being, as I said, a true road game for Duke, that same environment where it's really tough when you're young to go into these big road environments early in the college basketball season. So I think it's going to be a really interesting matchup. I think Wisconsin does match up better with Ohio State than they do with Indiana. I don't think E.J. Liddell is the type of guy that I'm as worried about dominating Wisconsin as I am a Trace Jackson Davis. Zed Key's been really good for this team. Arns is dangerous. But I actually think Wisconsin matches up really well with Ohio State. The question is, how will they face a road environment against a better team than Georgia Tech, which was their first road environment? How will they handle that road environment? As still, they're seven and one, yes, but they're still a young team. So it's early in the year, second true road game. Excited to see how they handle the pressure. Road game's the biggest test in this sport. We'll see what Wisconsin does there. Of course, got Indiana here today as you're listening before you get to that, as long as you're listening here on our Wednesday show. Tomorrow, we'll be back in Isaiah Hole in to talk, well, uh, Big Ten Championship stuff, of course. Our Michigan guy is still plenty busy as his team gets ready for the college football playoff and tries to figure out what's going on on the basketball court. We'll have more with Isaiah tomorrow. Thanks again, Asher, for coming in with us today. Before I let you go, I remind everyone how they get a hold of you. Yeah, badgerswire.com and at AOW underscore 33 on Twitter. And of course, Locked On Badgers podcast. And back next week on Wednesday here on Locked On Big Ten. Until tomorrow, I'm Nate Dickinson. Thanks for listening in. Well, if you've listened to Locked On Podcasts, you already know about betonline.ag. It is your online sportsbook 
experts for any sort of betting needs that you need on any sports around the globe, you can head on over to betonline.ag and make sure that you're getting the picks in with the best odds and the most information that you could possibly get. BetOnline.ag is your one-stop shop for everything you need gambling-wise. Head on over to the site right now, make an account, and use our promo code Locked On, and you'll get a 50% welcome bonus, too, on your first deposit. Again, it's BetOnline.ag, your place to go for all of your online sportsbook needs. This holiday season is, of course, like any other holiday season. The time of year for snacks and treats unlike any other, and honestly, usually loaded up with sugar. But Bilt Bar wants to remind you, if you're just trying to get through your day with some protein or wanting a healthy snack for that combination of taste and health, you can head on over to Bilt Bar and get one of their, again, always new flavors that they keep coming out with all the time. There are new holiday flavors out now as well. So head on over to Built Bar to get everything that you need for the holiday season as far as your protein needs go and, of course, your holiday treats as well, too. It's for you, the whole family. Again, these things taste amazing. When you look at it, it doesn't look like a protein bar. I'm used to seeing, like, the granola and other stuff in there. Not 100% real dark chocolate. And Built Bar has it right there with every single bar while getting less than 200 calories all the time, usually around 150 or less too. Also getting in at least 15 grams of protein, less than five net grams of carbs and sugar. I, I don't need to say anymore. It's healthy. It tastes good. Head on over to the site right now and use our promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Built Bar, again, where you need to be for all your protein bar needs.